Hey friends, and well, let me be honest, probably um, before this video is over, some of you will consider me as an enemy. Um, but I wanted to share a couple minutes about my thoughts, not only on the tragedies that we have been experiencing um, over these past months, and especially these last couple of days with the shootings of our black men, but what I'm coming to learn over my 23-year journey of being a white man, living and ministering amongst my black family here in several inner cities of Chicago. And I'm, I'm going to speak very black and white because, let's be honest, it's a black and white issue. Um, I want to take you to the book of Exodus, um, chapter 1, and I wanted to share a little bit of what took place prior to the rise of Moses. Um, when I read that, it talked about that the Pharaoh um, became concerned and very um, fearful that the Hebrew slaves were growing in number and in power. So in order to maintain their oppression, um, he put upon them great labor. He put upon the Hebrew slaves cruelty to keep them down. However, they still grew. And so he brought together some midwives and he instructed them that when a Hebrew boy was born, kill him. Well, these midwives did not follow, and the Hebrew slaves continued to grow. Eventually, the Pharaoh became so hatred and, and, uh, towards those Hebrew slaves that he made a decree. He put out an order that male baby boy Hebrew slaves were to be killed by casting them into the Nile River. Let's look at America. We brought blacks into this country as slaves. We never intended them to be anything other than a slave. But they began to grow in number and in power, and eventually they fought their way to some freedom. So we became even more cruel and to keep our black Americans down, we lynched, but yet they rose. So then we used the welfare system, the criminal justice system, to, to keep them down, to contain them, to destroy them, but yet they rose and they're rising. Then we built prisons and jails to hold them, yet they rose. And so now we are doing exactly what the Pharaoh did at the end, sending out a decree, kill him. So until we admit that when we wrote this Constitution that all men are created equal, that we never intended to include our black brothers and sisters, our nation may end up facing exactly what the Egyptians faced when they refused to let God's people go. So I'm going to say this to my white fellow Americans, that the bloodshed that is on its way is not on the hands of our fellow black Americans, but is on our hands. We are the ones that are refusing to let God's people go. We are the ones that are refusing to acknowledge that we do not value our black brothers and sisters as equal individuals or equal Americans as us white men. And to my black brothers and sisters, the racial issues, as I've said, have been there from the very foundation. But why do we see it more? Because there's a shifting. 
See, us white men have been at the head since the foundation. But we've had a black president. And you know, we've done everything in our power to keep him from really changing things. Now we have another minority rising to the top, a white female. What does that say? Those of us who are white men who have been at the head are now starting to see and fear that we are going to become the tail. And we know what we've done to you. And so now we're fearful that you're going to do to us what we have done to you. But I will say this. I've lived in a black community for 23 years. I've never been treated the way that this country has treated my black Americans. So I call out my white Americans to say we better heed, repent, acknowledge, and change. Because if we don't, I just want to again say this. The bloodshed that we will experience is on our hands, not the hands of our fellow black Americans. I welcome your comments. I welcome your feedback. Hit me up on Facebook or go to my webpage at www.studio2911.org. Again, that's studio2911.org. I don't necessarily know the answer except for us white Americans need to repent, acknowledge the lies that we have taught, acknowledge our value system of equality. It is not here and it does not include our black brothers and sisters. And we need to change and we need to change now.